Welcome back to the Stronger by Science channel. I am Dr. Pak, and today we're looking at periodization for muscle growth and whether the concept of periodization really applies to those of you out there that are not necessarily just focused on strength, but also want to get jacked. Before we start, let's briefly define periodization. Periodization formally refers to how one manipulates different training-related variables, for example, load, intensity of effort, frequency, etc., in order to be in peak performance for a specific event, usually a competition. When it comes to periodization in the literature and in practice, we have many different types of periodization, namely linear periodization, where one manipulates variables linearly as they approach the specific event that they're interested in. We have daily and weekly undulating periodization where variables change either from training day to training day or from week to week. For example, volume goes up from week one to week two and then back up on week three. And we also have block periodization where there are distinct blocks where variables are manipulated differently within those blocks. That's your typical old school power lifters. Where are my old school power lifters at? Leave a comment, I guess, or a like, leave that regardless, but who remembers the good old days where it was all about hypertrophy blocks, strength blocks, peaking blocks, and that was the thing in powerlifting. Still is to a certain extent, but things have become much more flexible. Before we look at some of the scientific evidence, there is a classic article, and I know I am biased. I am literally dripped out in Stronger by Science gear, I have a neon sign behind me that says Stronger by Science and a fresh chest tattoo that says Stronger by Science, which I cannot reveal for legal purposes. But even before I was here on the Stronger by Science channel and made content for Stronger by Science, I was a big fan of Stronger by Science. That cost Stronger by Science a lot of money for me to say. Just kidding, it didn't. I'm saying it for real. And if you are ever a student of mine at any of the universities I taught, you have for sure heard about Stronger by Science. Anyways, all that to say, an amazing article about periodization and strength and hypertrophy by the man himself, Greg Knuckles. Link is in the description for your, those of you that want to check out a deep dive before some of the researchers out there actually formally, formally looked at the um, literature on periodization and hypertrophy and strength. But without further ado, let's have a look at the latest literature on periodization and hypertrophy. So the paper when it comes to the literature and periodization and its effects on strength and hypertrophy is a 2022 paper that looked at volume equated resistance protocols that were either periodized or non-periodized on, you guessed it, strength and hypertrophy. Overall, the authors included studies that compared periodized to non-periodized protocols and specifically included studies that were at least four weeks long and equated for volume and also for training frequency. Because although for hypertrophy, the current literature does show the training frequency does not seem to have a meaningful impact, assuming that you're completing the same amount of volume. For strength, we do know that, hey, if you train and lift more frequently, you may make more gains than if you train it less frequently. Getting the strength results out of the way, because although we're focused mainly on hypertrophy for this video specifically, might as well touch on those as well. Periodized training led to greater strength increases. And I think we're looking at about a 28% versus a 23% increase in strength when it came to periodized versus non-periodized groups. And the article that I mentioned earlier, link in bio, check that out. That was published before the study, last amended, I think in 2018. And it essentially found that periodized training on average led to greater gains in strength than non-periodized training. When looking at the type of periodization specifically, and in trained individuals specifically, undulating periodization resulted in greater strength increases, nothing too crazy, but greater strength increases than linear periodization. So if you're a strength athlete or somebody who wants to maximize strength gains, if you're opting for a cookie cutter periodization scheme that you're going to follow to a T, then undulating periodization may be better than just linear periodization. Anyways though, strength, strength. 
It's 2024, it's all about muscle growth. Just kidding, it's not. But for some reason, on social media at least, it is not the reason we're doing this video though. Hey, stop making that comment. We're looking at hypertrophy specifically because it is an area of research that is less clear than strength. So on to the hypertrophy results. Periodized training did not lead to a significantly greater gain in muscle size when compared to non-periodized training at least in the context of these studies. We're talking about an average of roughly 4% hypertrophy in those uh, that follow the periodization program versus roughly 3% for those that didn't. It's important to note that training status did not influence the outcomes of this review as far as hypertrophy goes, uh, in contrast to the strength outcomes, although even there, uh, we just saw a difference between different styles of periodization, not periodized versus non-periodized, because that did not seem to have an effect on whether you were trained or untrained. So yeah, periodization, at least in the context of these studies that were not, you know, a year long, um, and at the same time where volume equated and frequency uh, was also matched between, between groups. Following a specific periodization model does not seem, or did not seem, to make much of a difference as far as hypertrophy goes. Now, that's not to say that periodization is something that you should take and throw out the window completely as far as muscle hypertrophy goes. And the reason for this is in these studies, we're talking about a few months of training and a few months, maybe two to four months of consistent training where individuals follow a specific model versus um, a training program that is relatively constant. Now, that specific periodization model, although it may have, like if they were following an undulating periodization model, that means that on a given day, participants could be doing something different from their next day versus doing, say, three by 10 for uh, two training sessions every week. They could have been doing three by five and then three by 20. The way periodization is usually explored in the literature does not necessarily mimic how you'd use periodization for hypertrophy in real life. And obviously the duration of these studies is not long enough to truly explore the concept of periodization. So it would be much different if we had people that uh, followed periodization for a year long, which we're not gonna have at any anytime soon, versus just a few months where, again, given that volume is equated and frequency is equated, I would not expect to see much of a difference, especially given the circumstances that these studies are performed under. Another thing is that these are studies that were controlled. So participants were doing the exact same volume, as I just said, something that in real life conditions, if you're able to have a program that is not periodized whatsoever and allows you to get the same amount of volume in as a periodized program that may have some you know built-in progression patterns and may undulate sets or reps on any given week or day if you're able to control for that and ensure that you're matching volume and you're getting the same amount of hard sets in over a long period of time then that's totally fine. But for some people, some form of periodization scheme and having an organized approach to their training may allow them to do a bit more volume over time, thus potentially eking out a few more gains. On that note, make sure to check out the Extreme Volume, Extreme Gains podcast episodes on the Stronger by Science podcast, where we do a deep dive on extreme high volumes and whether those can actually lead to extreme gains or whether they're a waste of time. Spoiler alert, there is something to them. However, back to the topic. So periodization, although in the literature, does not seem to play a meaningful role as far as hypertrophy goes. And I would also say that in practice too, there isn't a whole lot of need for absolutely planning everything to a T, planning the loads, and just having a built-in progression pattern that is fixed and you're following it to the absolute T for long periods of time, there may be some utility to following a periodization model if that allows you to do more volume, to train harder and to not miss out on sessions. It may be that for some people out there, having a program that is fixed and has the same sets every week and does not sort of coincide with their life, their schedules, 
or whatever, holiday uh, seasons, and th that may not allow them to do as much training volume, that may not allow them to push things as hard as they could, thus leading to potentially suboptimal gains. Keep in mind, this is all very speculative, but I want to make it clear that although in the literature, the current evidence suggests that, hey, periodization, not much of an effect on hypertrophy, I think that for some people, there's still, there may still be, be some utility. And if we look at some uh, of the recent data that we also discussed on the podcasts that I just mentioned about extreme volumes, in the NS study, for example, where they ramped up training volume over time, they saw, although not statistically significant, a meaningfully greater hypertrophy in those that did, uh, that did ramp up their um their volume over time. Although the study did not directly look at periodization, and I'm not saying that you're missing out on a ton of gains if you did not periodize for hypertrophy, just don't take the conclusion of the latest review on periodization and hypertrophy and just run with only that. There may be cases where some form of periodization may still come in handy and may still allow you to at least maximize gains. For the majority of people out there that want to make solid strength gains, they probably don't need to bother much with that either. But overall, don't completely close the door fully on periodization for hypertrophy. Leave it slightly open. That's all I'm saying. And I'm saying leave it slightly open, not because there's some magical mechanism here that I'm proposing that, you know, periodization sort of taps into and you're able to make more gains because you are sensitizing the muscle more or anything like that. Make sure to check out our video on deloads as well on that topic. But I'm just saying that if periodizing allows you to do more over time, then there may be something to that. That is all. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget that if you're somebody interested in strength, periodization is still something that is probably of use to you. Although, as you saw, even when not periodizing, you're still looking at awesome strength gains. And just as I tricked you into thinking that I was going to say, don't forget to like and subscribe, don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to check out the Stronger by Science podcast for in-depth dives on all things lifting. Check strongerbyscience.com slash coaching if you want an evidence-based coach that will help you get closer to your goals. And obviously strongerbyscience.com for articles and a lot of content that, in my opinion, is the best out there. I know you're not used to seeing the SBS flex, but hey, that's why we're here. Neon Science Baby, Armani Silk handmade t-shirts that cost thousands of dollars, and you know the vibes. Peace.